What's up, everybody? I'm Annie Uduka. Welcome to Sports Anytime. It has been a minute. It's literally my uh, third go around at this. this. This podcast has been going on uh, since 2012. Um, when I remember back when I was uh, trying to hype up uh, OJ Mayo going to the Mavs. Was that 2012? Yeah, yep, that was 2012. That was 2012. <laughs> oh, yeah, hard times. I was ba- yeah, I was I was hyping him up so hard, bro. Especially I think we got like Sam Dallenbear as our as our center, and I was just like, bro, this is he could be our Tyson Chandler <laughs> and, and stuff like that. Yeah, it was it was bad. But anyway, um, so this is like I said, it's my third go around. I'm brought to you by Dallas Prospect. My boy Derek DDP Kirby uh, allows me to hop on his platform and hop on his YouTube channel and talk Mavs talk other sports style sports maps are are where it's at right now unfortunately we didn't win the stanley cup in the in hockey um cowboys are literally not worth mentioning other than mentioning that they're not worth mentioning um it's sad but anyway but uh i'm here with my boy richard stamen right did i pronounce your name right yep yeah you got it aka at mavs drafts on twitter um Literally about to talk Mavs uh, draft, draft in general. Uh, uh, Richard, how you doing, brother? I'm doing well. I'm excited for this. I, uh, you got me thinking back when I made the worst take of my life, probably when I said, when I said in 2012, I was like, man, this team like low key, it has more talent than the title team. And it did not. It did not. I was, I was stuck in like Yo, 2009. <laughs> when I tell, when I tell you back in 2012, we were still riding high on that, on that championship wave that no matter what like you could have you could have basically dumped that whole team got rid of Dirk and we were like you know what we could make this work like we were, that's how I believe that's how high we were bro it was crazy uh, I remember even getting we got Lamar Odom that wasn't the year. yeah that was the year oh, we got Lamar God. Odom and oh, I was God. super hyped uh and I was like man that's it that's that's the key we're gonna be we're gonna be contending again because we got Lamar Odom <laughs> which hasn't if you're looking back at that, wasn't that bad of a take because he's like literally, I think a year off of winning the six man of the year. Cause I think yep. the year we swept him, he went six man of the year. So that wasn't too terrible a take. So we got to give ourselves a little break. But anyway, man, 2020 uh, and NBA draft is the latest one. Uh, it's November 18th, which is, is crazy. Cause what mo- uh, months, uh, the draft is usually like on what June or July? Yeah, end of June. Yep. End of June. I'm tripping. So I was I was driving down the street, and for for anyone we have, I guess we have people listening in uh, in overseas uh, in Europe, but over here in Texas we have warm weather. I want to say for like eighty percent of the year. So I was driving down the road. I was listening to uh, some podcasts talking about the draft. And it was about 75 degrees. Literally, I can put myself in a frame of mind when it was just like, it's, it's June. And when I thought about it, it was no- November. I was like, God dang, dude, like, this doesn't feel like November. It still feels like summer. But anyway, good time. So we're here to talk about draft. Uh, what, let me first, first off, uh, I'd like to thank you for taking your time. Because I, I hit you up a lot just randomly just talking about <laughs> draft stuff. And, uh, and I mean, you can, you can definitely keep yourself unmuted. You don't need to, you don't need to mute yourself every time you're not talking. Um, <laughs> unless, unless there's, you have like a bunch of crap going on in the background that I don't need to know about. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm, I always hit you up on, on Twitter asking you about your takes on, uh, different draft, different prospects, different, uh, just different everything. Uh, you're from, or you're a Dallas fan. I'm not sure if you're from Dallas. Uh, but I definitely appreciate your takes. You're definitely working hard uh, on the draft every year. Uh, so let me ask you, though. Number one question, what is your overall take on this draft? So uh, I, it's, it's a little bit underrated. It's also overrated at the same time. Like, it's very – it's close to average. It gets a bad rap because there's no star power at the top. There's no, like, franchise-changing guy at the top. Uh, that's – you know, and a lot of people look at that and define the class. Like some people thought last year was a good class when I don't really think it was that much after like the 20th pick. Um, not so much the same this year. It's like the top 10 are kind of boring. 
But after that, like you could make the argument 10 to 15 or whatever, 15 to 20, all the way to 60. There's not much drop off before between like most of the guys. So it's, it's a weird class. I've never seen something like that. And, and normally I'd say maybe I'm just overthinking it because we've gotten to see so much, but I felt this way in January, December, February, like any time, you know, live basketball was happening. Yeah, it's de- definitely uh, the way to describe it is definitely weird because that's my dog. God dang it. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can't stop me. But anyway, um, yeah, that's the one that's the one way to describe it because I, I just looking back, dude, like um, during the year, um, it, it definitely seems like there's not a lot of stop power, just like you said. Uh, definitely teams are, you know, we have like a weird top three teams that like two of them are like, we kind of don't need a, a number one pick. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a weird time to be a, a number one pick anyway, because it feels like, uh, you know, you're kind of at a disadvantage. My dog's about to come in. Okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, it's kind of at a disadvantage a, a, little, a little bit. Like, I feel like the most exciting picks, like the some people have described the sweet spot of this draft is like six through like basically 20. Like, yep. if you got like the top three picks, you're like, uh, I really don't know because you don't have that, that top end talent like you did. So it's like, man, I'm, I'm about to spend the number one pick money for basically a role player. And who knows if, uh, you know, this person is going to even be a high end role player or wherever. So, but I mean, it's still, it's still good to have the number one pick, but um, I, I think one, one of the, one of the uh, things that I'm also excited about, because yes, um, as, as a mass fan, we tend to, as a fan base, we tend to, uh, uh, kind of orient our our what's the word I'm looking for? I kind of kind of the belief system of how we're supposed to build a team, kind of how our front office does it. And one of the things we have right. neglected is using the draft to build a team when we already have some established members. And I'm and I'm one of those guys that are like, I think we should not go the route that we did back when Dirk was kind of at his prime. That we just kind of brushed the the draft away. I think this is a good time. This is a good year, especially being at the 18th pick um, to actually, you know, I think we should, I think we should keep the picks uh, depending on what offers we can get, but I'm leaning towards picking the pick or keeping the picks uh, because I think if we, if we can continue to, you know, insert young talent on this team, that could learn that continue to be affordable for us. We want to spend a, a crap ton of money. Uh, I think we can find ourselves being that. I think that's one of the ways you can be uh, a dynasty, not necessarily. I mean, yeah, you can bring in all the talent you can in the world, whatever, whatever, but that's how, you know, the San Antonio Spurs, that's how they built their dynasty. Of course they drafted their main stars and then they, they had the run and then they drafted Kawhi that kind of, built him up a little bit and, and it's good that we have Luca super good that we have Luca and super good that we have uh Christoph Porzingis and but if you can find yourself another gem which I feel like this um this draft you can especially being where we're where we're at um I feel like you know that is definitely something that we should probably value just a tad bit more uh so uh I did see I was on Twitter that you did recently do a, uh, a a mock draft. Tell me about that. Were you doing that with other people? Because you said it was pretty rough. That didn't go. Oh, so I got I got a joint mock draft coming soon, but that one's easier because I don't have to do everything. And I just I've done it three times as solo mock, and I can't make it past the lottery. I just I I thought I had an idea the last week when I did one. I was trying to do one a week. I just physically couldn't. Uh, I literally hit a wall. I was like, no, this doesn't seem right. After like eight picks, I was like, nothing feels right, which probably means it was accurate mm-hmm. if we're being real, but like, <laughs> it's, it's just unpredictable. I feel like if I had gotten to 20, I could have made it a lot more realistic, but I just couldn't make it there. Man. So let me ask you, how, how, how long have you been in basically studying drafts and doing mock drafts and all that? How long have you been doing so, that? <laughs> so I'm also an Orlando fan. I'm from there originally. Okay. Uh, so in 2004, when they drafted Dwight Howard, I was so excited uh, mm-hmm. because I remember looking up him and Emeka Okafor and they were like, you know, the top two prizes. And uh, mm-hmm. I was very happy that Orlando got Dwight. But uh, ever since then, I just kind of liked the, the future kind of aspect. You know, you're almost predicting the future with these guys. Mm-hmm. And I've always thought that was pretty cool. 
Um, really didn't start doing this till 2017. I just didn't want to flood my personal Twitter anymore. So mm -hmm. I made this and then made a site, which was like super cheap. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm just going to put all my stuff here. I wrote about how Donovan Mitchell should have been the Mavs pick. And uh, who knows what the timeline, I'm kind of glad I'm wrong on that. Like, I yeah. didn't listen because who knows if the Mavs get Luca, but it, uh, it he worked did, out. He did, he did lead <laughs> yeah. his team uh, to the second round this with the year, even past the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. So yeah. may, maybe we wouldn't have landed Luca, but uh, I mean, Donovan Mitchell, he, he's nice, but definitely it's, it's way better that we got uh, Luca. Yeah. So, um, so basically with your expertise, this, this draft, um, I think one of the questions uh, that I really wanted to ask you is personally for you, was this draft more fun to cover because of the uncertainties and stuff like that? Like you said, you tried to do your mock draft and you said you had no clue versus I remember like 20, I think it was 2017, the, the, the Dennis Smith draft. I pretty much got the whole top 10. I probably went as far as you can, you can look at this at our, at our archives back at our Dallas Prospect website, but I probably, me and Derek did a mock draft and we pretty much got nine out of 10 of wow. the first 10, right? The only thing we didn't foresee was Chicago trading up to seven to get Lord Markin. Yeah. Uh, and that was pretty much the only thing, but it was pretty much cut out because teams had their needs and whatever. And of course, uh, you know, Markel Fultz was the end all be all number one pick, even though, you know, if you did that again, it would probably be a little different. But still, yeah. I mean, it was fun. But for you, is it fun to have, like, a draft that's a little bit more predictable or unpredictable? Because I, I feel like this one Man. is a little is more fun. It's – let me, let me re-answer – let me answer that in the year. Uh, because okay. <laughs> I don't know how wrong I'm going to be. If I'm right, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. But if I'm wrong, I've absolutely hated it. It kind of it – But, like, it, I mean, it has been fun, though. Because, like, the uncertainty does make it fun. I think the, the difference is, like, having someone like Zion or Luca or someone like that that everybody, for the most part, agrees on one way or another. Like, those guys, it, it's not, you know, you're not really breaking much ground there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's, there's no clear number one players, not even clear number, like, top five. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's kind of fun. Uh, it's nerve-wracking, though. On the it, right or wrong aspect, I hate it. Yeah. So, I mean, it kind of it kind of – you have to stretch your basketball knowledge. You have to stretch your knowledge of different teams, what they need, and probably how they yep. how they uh, run their run their shows and stuff like that. Like one of the examples is uh, McDaniel's, Jaden McDaniel's being mocked yeah. to uh, Orlando at 15 because he's tall. <laughs> like it's like John Hammond, yeah. like tall prospects, and I'm like, I mean, I get it, but they probably need something else. Yeah. <laughs> and Jaden is just such a he's such a uh, I guess a raw prospect that if you're that guy, you probably not. And another one is like any European player to the Mavs, essentially. I'm just like, come on, yep. like, really? Like uh, <laughs> I was watch I was listening to a I was listening to a mock today, and a dude had like Leandro Bol Bolmero to the Mavs at 18. I'm like, yo, <laughs> it was like there's, See, so, there's I, so many other guys we could get. There's so many other guys on the yep. board that can help us this year. And Balmero probably wouldn't even come from overseas in the next two years. So it's crazy. Yeah. Well, see, that's why I could actually see it if they wanted to. That would be like the one European that I could see. And like, I feel like if the Mavs wanted to go cheap, that's who they would take. But it is still low hanging. Like, it is completely low hanging for to mock. And same for San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Putting like those, inter those are the two that like everybody puts those international guys. So like, oh, they'll take him. I like, guess if they're the only two teams to have international players. Yeah, I've, <laughs> seen, I've seen, like, Pokushevsky all the way to number 11. I'm like, yo, look. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess you can, you can do it, but I, yeah. I, highly, I highly doubt that. This is, it's, draft is volatile, but I'm not sure it's – I'm not sure it's that volatile, but watch. Right. Number 18, they, they pull the trigger and get Pokushevsky at 11. I'm just like, all right, whatever. Dude, For everything I know about this draft out the window. <laughs> After Thon Maker in 2016, I could believe anything though. Like I still cannot believe that he went top ten. Tom, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that's <sighs> and so. So now we're talking about uh, um, on the subject of drafts and stuff like that. What what is your, I guess, your worst take? You've been doing this since 2017. Back when I guess that was the time to do it because the Mavs finally had it yeah. and picked. Um, 
I guess, what was your worst take since then? And I'll tell you, I'll tell you mine after you tell me. So uh, last year, it was probably last year's, I had uh, Lewis King as my 15th best player. He didn't get drafted. <laughs> so that's, that, I'll, I'll take that one as uh, or I had Malik Monk third in 2017. That was a big loss. I, i told myself, don't do it for the longest time. And, like three days before the draft, I'm like, I have to do it. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, so like, you, had, you, had you, him go, you had him going to uh, the 76ers. So I, uh, I had him to, who was it? I forget who I had Sorry, him to. Yeah, I had 76ers, him third on my board. but they drafted first. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, I had him third on my board, and I was like, he should be top three, top five. And, like, uh, that's, yeah, I, I fell I for it. There, there was a lot of Malik Monk talk back in those yeah. days. Right? He was, he was one of my, uh, he was one of my, uh, uh, I guess on my wish list, I had because yeah. I really wanted the Mavs to get a. I really wanted the Mavs to get a point guard. Number one on my wish list was Dennis Smith, uh, because I saw him in NC State. I fell in love with him. Uh, you can go back. You don't have to, but you can go back to my team. <laughs> I remember in February when the Mavs traded for Nerlens Noel. My tweet was uh, pretty much along those lines: "Awesome game, Nerlens Noel. Now tank for the rest of the year so you can draft Dennis Smith." <laughs> And yep. when we got him, I was so excited. I was probably just excited as you when the Orlando drafted uh, Dwight Howard. Uh, but at least Dwight Howard led his team to a, uh, <laughs> an NBA Finals. And uh, Dennis Smith can't even make the rotation on the New York Knicks. Uh, so a year, a year later. But he did land a, He did get us uh, Porzingis. So I did have some yeah. source on the ground to be excited about. Uh, so my worst take. Um, I don't want to say this is, is, is not a, it's not bad, but it's not great. So my, my, my worst take was putting Michael Porter Jr. as my number one wish list. Wow. Didn't care about the injuries or anything. Wow. Uh, over, <laughs> over Luca, over everyone. And here my reasoning was because we're building, if we're building around uh, Dennis and whatever pick that we're gonna have, I was I was thinking along those lines, and I I saw Luca and stuff like that. I was like, eh, he wouldn't work very well <laughs> with Dennis. So let's let's not draft him. But what I, I guess with 2020 hindsight, at that stage in the Mavs, uh, I guess development cycle, we're we're just a mold of clay. Like we're we're not anything. Yeah. So, Definitely is definitely if you're that high, if you're picking number five and is best player available, uh, roster be damned. You can move whatever you need. If you have if you had a an opportunity to get a guy like Luka Doncic and you have a Dennis Smith, you, you know you can try to make them work out. But if, you know they didn't, and we have the opportunity to get Kristaps Porzingis, so they played it perfect. And this is the reason why I'm just a dude that does a podcast for fun and not actually running an NBA front office. Uh, so, you know, they definitely edged out um, that one. I'll get him next time, though. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to get into this. Uh, so we're going to talk Mavs draft. And we'll pick at number 18, number 31. And we're going to pretty much proceed from here on out as if the Mavs plan to – we're going to have those two picks come to 18th and we're not trading them away, even though there's so many rumors flying around. Zach Levine, Spencer Dinwiddie, all these guys, uh, Giannis, whatever, whatever, you know, Kobe Bryant, anybody and everybody is, is uh, you know, rumored to Mavs to be interested in. We're going to go ahead and proceed that uh, they're going to have their 18th and 31th pick on the, on the roster come December 22nd. Uh, so uh, you probably have your big board set up. Uh, I have mine. Mine's probably not as good as yours. Um, but tell me some of the players that you have. And this is, this is the question that the dude asked you on Twitter. And I was like, come on, bro. That was like my first yeah. question I was going <laughs> to ask you. <laughs> well, what, like, judging by your, your knowledge of the Mavs roster, what they need, what's the best fit around, whatever they need to do, what they lack and everything else, what is the best – Fits. You're talk, give me a couple of fits that you have for the 18th pick or a couple of selections or prospects for people to look at. And then also give me some uh, prospects that you're looking at for the Mavs at 31 as well. Yeah, so for 18, the dream is Josh Green. Uh, I'm all in on him. 
super athletic defender, like high motor. He does everything that he checks all the boxes on defense that you can ask for. Uh, he gambles a little bit too much, but he's also like 19. So <laughs> I feel like that's every 19 year old. Uh, I would also say Desmond Bain from TCU, just right in the Mavs backyard. I think he's the best shooter in the draft. So he's very clearly one. Um, and then Aaron Neesmith too, arguably the other best shooter in the draft. Those are the two best. He doesn't do a lot though, outside of shooting, which worries me. And then another, I would say, um, man, I, I don't think he'll be there, but if he is, he might have to be number one, which is Sadiq Bay. Uh, mm -hmm. He's pretty much a Wesley Matthews clone before the injury, before which the injury? if Dallas loved, <laughs> what? I said, no, yeah, before the injury, heck yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, if Dallas, if Dallas loved Wesley Matthews with an Achilles tear, I can't imagine how they'd feel about a healthy, young version of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I just can't see a world where Sadiq Bey, I, I feel like his, his absolute floor of when he gets drafted is 16 to Portland. Yeah. <laughs> it's yep. like I, uh, I try, I try, people mock so many different things. Tankathon has us choosing him and I'm excited, but they also have the, the Timberwolves choosing uh, Jalen Smith uh, 17th. And I'm like, I don't understand. Yeah. How <laughs> 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 I'm getting, and then they have, and then they have uh, uh, the Blazers choosing um, RJ Hampton. I was like, they have like all the guards. Hmm. <laughs> and they, have, they have like every single guard. Yeah. In Portland. That's a bad I one. I don't think they need uh, another guard, especially with Rod uh, Rodney Hood, you know, recovering from his injury. Yeah. Carmelo Anthony probably, probably not coming back. Who knows? Uh, or just the fact that you have Carmelo Anthony on the team in general, you probably yeah. need to either start in front of him or back him up. Uh, you just, they just need depth. But not, yeah, definitely number one is that for me is Sadiq Bey. I love what he brings. I love the pedigree he comes from. Villanova, those cats that come from Villanova are, are top notch in terms of they might not be the most athletic and they, mo they might not be like the most uh, uh, in terms of, you know, highlights or whatever appealing, but those cats know how to win and they know how to play the game of basketball and they know how to play it the right way. And that's, and that's how Rick Carlisle loves his young players. Um, he, he definitely gets frustrated a lot with the, with the high rises and the high athletic guys, but make a lot of mistakes and we have to, you know, give them a short lease. But, you know, guys like uh, Jalen Brunson, who, who's just a winner, he came in and knew how to win, knew how to play the game the right way. And, and definitely um, Rick Carlisle knew, you know, knew we can trust him, you know? So it was, it was really cool. Sadiq Bay is definitely not my number one pick. Uh, I hear a lot about Aaron Nace. Is it Neesmith or Naismith? I don't know. I've heard both. I've yeah. heard both. Um, Naismith, he will probably like somewhere around number three. Uh, he used to be two, but man, the person who's been rising for me is Desmond Bain. De yeah. Like I used to be like, we can probably get Desmond Bain with our thirty-first pick. Like, but yeah, <laughs> it pisses me no. off that he's. It pisses me off that he's rising so much. Like, uh, Y'all need to just stop watching him. Like, <laughs> he's a second rounder. Like, no, stop, stop. Like. Let's <laughs> Yeah, no, he's definitely a dude that if, if we end up taking him at 18, I'm to the point now where if we take him at 18, I have absolutely no problem. I'll be hyped um, instead of trying to be greedy and hopefully blocking the whole league off of drafting up until 31. Can't do that. Uh, so, yeah, there's definitely some good names. Uh, what about – some people have like a, a, Tyre, a Tyrese Maxey. I hope I said that name right. It's Tyrese. Yeah, yeah, Is it Tyrese or Ty? Yeah. Okay, no, so you got Maxie. it. All right, yeah. So people have a ton of respect. What, what, what say you about Mavs draft? Because obviously, I think your your mindset is Mavs need defense, they need shooting, and they need a wing. Um, so when you see a guy like Tyrese Maxey being drafted to the, uh, be mocked to the Mavericks, what's your, what's going through your mind? Yeah, he's. I don't really buy the shot ever developing. He gets the Kentucky reputation, but like, the shot's pretty awful right now. <laughs> uh, like a lot of his misses just don't even didn't touch rim uh, it's worrisome but he can probably guard up to the wings so that's really helpful and he's a good slasher and good creator so I like him but it's weird I don't know how he can play without the jump shot that that does worry me yeah especially in new age basketball when you have uh, when you have a, a guy like Luke on your team definitely we we need people that can hit the shots by the floor um you know, keep the lane from being bunched up. I, I have my thing with Luca that 
I definitely would like to have another playmaker, not just to take the ball out of Luca's hands, but just to it's basically to keep him healthy longer. Uh, yeah. Because he can still be effective, but him driving down all the time in the league, people come down on him. I'm just looking at ankles just being rolled over all the time. I was just like, if, if we can turn down the amount of times he has to drive in for him to be successful and have someone else do it from time to time, that would be, be perfect. But, yeah, we have Ty, Tyrese Max definitely. Uh, I mean, he definitely has a Kentucky pedigree. And I do think that pedigree is a little boosted because everyone's like, oh, they, they look at the Anthony Davises. They look at the, yep. they look at the John Walls. They look at, uh, you know, Devin Booker's and stuff like that. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, they have good players. I must say they don't have good players, but they also have some of their their stinkers as well. I mean, we did have Nerlens Noel. Um, yeah. We had uh, – I mean, there's some other guys. I thought about some other guys. Um, and then literally, this is what happens, dude. So I, I – when I'm, like, listening to podcasts and I, I listen to the hosts stumble over names, and it's just like, oh, it's this guy, this guy, this guy. And I pull them off the top of my head. But then I get on my own freaking podcast – and it was like names escape me, years, dates, <laughs> information of all sorts just tend to escape me. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty maddening. All right. So another guy that I've seen uh, mock to the Mavs uh, a couple of times, not a lot, uh, and it's someone that I definitely have a lot of questions about um, being November. If this was like November last year when the season started and, and he was mocked to the Mavs, I'd be excited but not so much anymore is definitely uh see forgot his name rj hampton <laughs> yeah rj's rj's an intriguing one uh i don't know where i stand on him i think he needs to go to the right team mm-hmm. uh the jump shot is a lot better i know he's been working out with uh, mike miller and penny hardaway in memphis but uh he's got the physical tools i mean he's an amazing slasher he's quick he gets the basket so he's got the raw talent it's just about developing him and putting it all together. And I do think he gets screwed over almost by the fact that he got hurt overseas. Like it's a terrible combination. Uh, and obviously I'm guilty. I have him 24th on my board, but the bus factor is just massive with him. Go into the, yeah, like the, yeah, that's a good, that's a good spot for him to, for him to be. See, I, I do think he goes lottery though. I think he goes think lottery. He goes lottery? I, I just, yeah, I just, I can't put him as a lottery ranked guy. I think someone's going to be intrigued. I think it's New Orleans. They have nothing to lose kind of thing. Yeah. And if they get another <laughs> ball handler. Yeah, if they're trying to, if they're trying to trade um, Drew, definitely yeah. keep them drafting, which, which helps, though. The fact that they're trying to trade, uh, trade Drew kind of excites me. It, for one, we, we, we can possibly land him if we beat out every other uh, uh, person for, for his services. But at the same time, that, that makes a need for – uh, New Orleans at 13 to possibly uh, draft a point guard or a two guard instead of a Sadiq Bay. So maybe, I don't know, Sadiq Bay or Aaron, Na- Aaron Naismith. So it moves them down, just builds my hope a little bit. Um, so what, who do you have around 31? That's, this is an intriguing one because I guess we have such a wide range of people. Right. Um, my kind of uh, philosophy with second round picks is, uh, I mean, people can go with the measurements, um, you know, with the upside. Um, I'm more like a, Hey, if we can get a guy that does one thing real well and that, and he does that one thing that we really need, then get him. I don't care if, if he lacks in everything else is like, if the dude can't run, can't do anything, can't rebound, can't defend, but he can shoot the lights out. <laughs> and he's a second round pick and it's like hey second round you can find some gems over there uh but who who do you have for us at 31 what's some names that we should be looking at yeah so i would say daniel oturu from minnesota he's crazy raw but also he had a crazy productive season he had 20 and 11 uh which i think the only high major players to do that since 2009 were like blake griffin deandre aiden and marvin bagley so it's a pretty good list if you can get that as a big man you said uh, uh, Daniel Oturu? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, one guy, that's one guy I haven't looked up. So kind of give me a rundown of – Yeah. Of so he's long. Uh, he's, I think, 6'10 or 6'11 with like a 7'3 wingspan. Mm-hmm. He's got the shooting upside. It's a work in progress, but he's got the upside. Um, really good finisher. He's a 
slasher almost uh, for a big man, which is really rare. And he's got the athleticism to be at least neutral on defense. He just, his biggest issue is he a lot of the times just doesn't know what he's doing out there. He just looks lost. And that's mostly on defense. So yeah. that's it. He's a swing for the fences. Um, another, this guy's a dream. I don't think he'll be there at 31 is Emmanuel quickly, uh, who I think he has a chance to be the best Kentucky prospect just because he's long. He can shoot. He has the best floater in the, in the class, even though he's a terrible finisher at the rim, mm -hmm. like he makes up for it. Um, and he is an off guard kind of, he was hidden because he had to play small forward with two other point guards, oh, wow. but he really in high school was a point guard. So someone like that. And then the third guy would be Tyler Bay who's a defensive specialist, kind of like MKG, but the good version of him. The good you know one. what I mean? Not like, not, like, not like the 11th, 12th man, but like when he was in Charlotte and was actually like – He was productive. actually produ productive? Okay. Yeah. Tyler Bay is a dude that I've looked at a couple of times. Um, the shot is non-existent. Yeah. I think a good comp that I've heard with uh, Tyler Bay is Andre Robertson uh, from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, you, you're definitely hit it right on the nose, defensive specialist. The guy is athletic as crap. Uh, I mean, defense is certainly something we need. Um, the, I'm going to ask you a guy, and I'm going to ask you about a guy, and we mentioned him earlier in the podcast. Um, and I want to get your idea of what's the chances this guy, because he has such a wide, I'm trying to build this guy up, you know, uh, he has such a wide a range of outcomes. What's the chances that a guy like Jaden McDaniels slides to 31? And I guess for the people who don't know, what does a guy like Jaden McDaniels brings? Yeah, so I, I think he's actually going to be a pretty solid, like, top 25 player. I think he's gone by 25, unfortunately. I, I've heard he's rising, uh, which hurt me because I was hoping for 31. Uh, and he's got the same agent as Luca, so like that's a you know yeah. <laughs> but basically, with McDaniel's, he's an in, an incredible defender. Uh, I think seven four wingspan. He's like six nine, seven three, something like crazy long, super skinny. Needs to add weight, but he's just been a he, he was a defensive stopper. He guarded a lot of point guards at college. He guarded some bigs. He was able to be a help side defender. That's going to be his calling card offensively, theoretically. He can create. Uh, he doesn't really know how to use. Like he has great handles for someone his size. They should not be able to do like just in and outs like he does. And uh, he just doesn't know how to use it to get to his spots, which is an issue. And his shot is kind of weird. Uh, but if he puts everything together, I mean, he's a he's a swing of the fences. Uh, so if he does slide, what is what is the reason? What are some potential reasons why uh, people will be a little? hesitant to draft him, even though he has such a high upside i think he's got the existence that he's going to be at <laughs> thanks yeah i think it's the just bust factor that if he can't shoot he probably doesn't really create and then like you have a defensive guy who's really skinny mm -hmm. uh so there could be a lot of uh pitfalls to him so the shooting is the biggest question mark for him if he can shoot he's sticking for 10 plus years okay uh so I think I, I probably read in about two uh, – and basically I'm just, I'm just going to quick fire prospect <laughs> to talk about them. Um, and this is a guy that I've seen in about two mock drafts for us at 31, Robert Woodard out of Mississippi State. I have not, I have not looked into him at all. Um, the only thing I know about him is that he's a 6'7", he's a small forward. Yeah, so he's got really long arms too, crazy frame. Uh, super athletic, plays above the rim. Okay. He's not really a creator for himself or anything. Um, good spot up shooter. He'd probably cut a lot would be his main thing on offense, just off ball, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, decent defender. I think that's his biggest swing skill because he doesn't really stick out either way. I don't know how to make that, make mm -hmm. it that. So if he, if he can be a good defender, he's sticking. That's probably his biggest swing that's factor. What, that's going to be how he, basically how he sticks in the league, how he, how he provides for his family is going to be through his defense. So, yep. Yeah. yeah. And like, I mean, he's got the tools for it. I mean, a seven foot plus wingspan, really athletic, like I said. So it's, it's just about putting it all together. Probably. That's a, that's a long arms you got there. So, yeah. He's only six, seven. Yeah. I'm double six, checking seven, the 30. I like that. I like that. I like that. Yes. Type of bite. Yep. I don't like no, you know, say, I mean, six, 10, if you six, 10 have some guard skills, but you skinny as hell, uh, 
I could probably give you a pass, <laughs> but if you're seven foot, po- okay, so we're going to talk about Poku Shesky. Poku yeah. Shesky. Uh, seven foot, what is he, 190? One- <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's so skinny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, no, that's a, that's a pass for me. You, that, that means uh, being that tall with no muscle around you, it just looks like you're just going to break easy. Um, what about a guy? So let me give you some bigs that uh, I guess, because we don't know what the Mavs are thinking. So when it yeah. comes to 31, what are some potential bigs other than the guy that you said, uh, Udoka? Was it Udoka? Oh, Oturu. Oturu, sorry. Udoka. No, you're good. <laughs> uh, Oturu. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I see sometimes Isaiah Stewart from Washington. Uh, and like Zeke Naji, uh, well, like, give me some, like, what can they do if they get drafted? Should I be excited? What can they bring to my team? I'd be more excited about Zeke. Uh, Isaiah Stewart has a lot where he, a lot more scenarios, I feel like, where he fails in the league just because he's a post oriented big that lives around the rim and can kind of shoot. I, I do think he'll shoot eventually, but he's just not a good defender mm-hmm. and he's a terrible passer. Like, it's a he's got a lot of risks to him and I don't know if the payoff really outweighs it because he might just be a spark plug center um Zeke Naji is kind of similar with the spark plug off the bench uh but I think he's a lot more capable defensively and could probably start and still be a positive player like he's not going to block shots or anything or um you know impact any shots at the rim but he can step out and guard the perimeter a little bit and he can hold his own like he's neutral you know Okay. That, I mean, but the it, jump shot is real. The fact that he's able to guard some perimeter players, even though he's six ten and he's a big guy, that's definitely that's definitely a plus. Um, I mean, we have a guy like that in Maxi. Uh, we get more Maxis. That's definitely a plus. This is the guy. He's not a big. I I forgot to mention him before. Um, Cassius Stanley out of Duke. Um, why? Because apparently he was he was a guy who was projected to be a lottery player at the beginning of the year, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, like around there. Yeah. Yeah, like in the so, 20s, okay. 15s. Why is he slotted to, I guess, mock to be uh, – I'm looking at a mock draft right now. He's at 40. Um, yeah. Would you, if you're the Mavs, and if the board lands in a way that makes you think about it, uh, would you, I guess – you draft Cassius Stanley. What does he bring to the table? How excited should Mavs fans be if a Cassius Stanley gets uh, drafted to the Mavs? Uh, I mean, what, what's some of his traits that we should be excited about? Yeah, so he's a really good defender. Amazing feet. Like, he can stay in front of anybody, and he's super skinny. He, he can overcome the strength uh, really well, I think, for someone his size. However, if he is going to be a wing, he does have to add weight just because, I mean, you got the Kawhi Leonard's, the Paul Georges, uh, all those guys of the world that are just freaks. Um, his biggest thing, though, I mean, he's got a plus one wingspan for a wing you kind of want, someone longer. Uh, he can't create for himself at all in the half court. But if he hits, the jump shot, I think, is the biggest thing. If he can shoot, he'll be good. Uh, it's a huge swing factor. Like, it's completely 50-50 for me. Um, he can be an athletic three Indian. He's a freak athlete. He broke Zion's uh, um, vertical at Duke. So really? it was a one-year record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so when you're breaking well, Zion's well, records, well, like yeah, that's pretty impressive. You can br- break uh, Zion's record. Zion's like yeah. the ultimate freak of nature. So if yeah. you're able to at least jump higher than that, you know he should. Even he weighs like a hundred pounds less than he does. But <laughs> 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 but. but but still, like, nevertheless, that's still, that's still impressive. What was his vertical? Uh, I want to say it was 44 inches, 45, something like that. It was, yeah, it's crazy. Dennis Smith range. <laughs> Dennis, yeah, Dennis, God dang. <laughs> Dennis Smith, if you could have panned out, if there's a way we can pluck him out of New York, I still feel like there's something there. It's yeah. Just, <laughs> it's just in New York where nothing, like, where everything goes to die, essentially. And no one gets better. I was like, just get him out of there. I don't want to say bring him bring him back because we have all the freaking guards and also in Dallas, we have so many guards. <laughs> uh, but if we can get him, put him in Charlotte or something, I don't know. But if also- yeah, hey, that's, I've been suggesting I really want this. I don't think Charlotte fans would want it, but 
do a swap, bring him Dennis Smith home, Malik Monk for Dennis Smith. I would be yeah. all about that. <laughs> Malik Monk, I think he'll enjoy New York or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, they definitely do that. I mean, he's, he's definitely I, – I will say this. Luka is good. Luka is exciting. Uh, but in terms of if, – if I'm a super casual basketball watcher, right, people – Mavs land, don't be offended that I'm about to say this. If I'm a super casual, it was Dennis Smith was a lot more exciting to watch than Luca. But then that's about that's about it. <laughs> like you you'll get a dunk. I mean the fact that he he bounced he bounced an alley oop to himself. <laughs> we have never seen anything remotely close to that in Dallas. Uh, so I mean, <laughs> so I'm, I mean, we basically were rocking with uh, who was our most athletic person was probably Ricky Lido. Ricky, bro, yeah. don't even get me started about Ricky. Lido. <laughs> I was that was one that, that should be a question I should ask you. What is that? <laughs> a, think about this. What is a prospect that you were so wanting to be something for the Mavericks and even it was like it's a, it was a long shot that was going to be anything. <laughs> <laughs> but you just want it so bad. Mine was Ricky Lito. So a point yeah. where uh, I was, we are playing, like, me and my roommates back in college were playing, like, 2K. And he was, like, a rotational player. Like, he was, like, Dude. my sixth man at a <laughs> 67 overall. So I was, like, bro, that, this is my guy, Ricky Lito. But anyway, I still it's, follow him on IG. But anyway. <laughs> it's him or uh, the other guy who becomes a literal god in that game is Jared Cunningham. Those are the two. Like, easily. <laughs> they, were, they were the biggest cheat codes ever. Like, I have – I have never, especially because 2K13 dunks were literally unstoppable. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, it's – that game, yeah, Jared Cunningham was a god. I wanted him to be good so bad, but I, I heard he just did not care about basketball. Man, Jared – that's the name I haven't heard in a long time. Yeah. For folks that don't remember, Jared Cunningham was actually the first-round draft pick. I don't even remember the year. I just 2012. The, the second-round draft pick was Jay Crowder. Uh, the and Bernard that. James. Bernard Sarge. <laughs> and they chose both of them over Draymond Green. Technically yeah. all three. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's we, it. We got some pretty uh, funny first rounders. Like we had we had that year where I forgot what we did with the first round pick, but our second round pick was freaking Sotnam Singh. Oh they, god, twenty fifteen. But we also yeah, that that one made me I mean the rationale was I basically getting the agent's graces so he could push yep. Andre Jordan to us. So I kind yep. of understand it. But then we also have those weird drafts for us where our first round draft picks were not exciting at all, but our second round were the ones that I was more excited about. So Ricky Lito yep. was one because uh, um, Shane Larkin was the first round draft pick. And I was like, this guy, I already knew that guy was not going <laughs> to pan out to be anything. And then uh, Jay Crowder was definitely another example of that. Jerry Cunningham, I mean, he was he was basically just the bouncer. That was it. He was like a, yep. a Jamario Moon, if you remember. It. You remember him, <laughs> dude? Yes, <laughs> like a poor man's Jamario Moon, essentially. Oh, Jamario had yeah. some, some hat highlights. Is bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mario at least had some highlights. Jared Cunningham, Jared Cunningham didn't. Yeah, so we were talking about Cassius Stanley. Um, let me get let me give you another guy that I'm intrigued of and I've been hearing a little bit of. Um uh I'm not gonna talk about Tyra Terry, even though I I don't want him to I don't I know he can shoot. I know he's gained he's gained muscle, like twenty pounds worth of muscle in the hiatus. Um, but like I said, we have all the guards um on our team. Like we're gonna have Luca, we're gonna have Tim, we're gonna have uh, I forget names. Curry, Brunson, Correa, Brunson technically coming back. We're gonna, yeah, we have so many guys. Is like we, I see a guy like Tyrese Maxey mocks mock to us, and I'm like, I mean, we have like 18 guards on our team, man. Who like, but we have no forwards. Like our, all our forwards nope. are, are what our wings. I should say, just so we can add in more names. Yeah. Tim Hardaway, uh, Dorian Finney-Smith. That's it. J- Justin Jackson, Blech. like the fact that we have to play him shows that we have a need. Yeah, <laughs> we, dude. I, don't, I love Max. Max. He might be good, 
but let him be successful in another place because we, we don't have space for him. We, like, literally, we have to run like three guard lineups. We're lucky that uh, Luca is as good as he as good as he at, he at the game as he is, and he has the size to go along with it. He's essentially a, a size of a three, but he's playing point guard for us, and I love him playing point guard. But we can't, we can't, do, we can't rock with no. only those two guys playing our wings at the most, pretty much the most premium position uh, in the in the game in in the NBA today is probably a do it all wing player. That, I mean, we have one of those in Luca, but we're just kind of like you're a point guard dude. Like, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> every time you're playing, you're you're essentially a point guard. Uh, so we need yeah. another, we need another person at that premium. We're basically um, a football team rocking without a. I don't want to say a good quarterback because everyone's like the point guard is a quarterback and Luca's our point guard. I get it, but the most premium position in basketball is to do it all forward. And we don't have that because Luca plays point guard. I'm basically trying to walk my way around. So um, I don't lose subscribers for, <laughs> for Derek because mass fans are like, this guy says that Luca is not a premium. I'm like, yo, listen, I have to, I have to explain myself. Um, but anyway, so give me, give me a couple guys that might be some, some reaches. Okay. So we've had, we've had reports. So this is a good question. I'm, I'm going straight off the dome. Right now. I'm having a good time though. So they've, um, so there are reports of the Mavericks looking to trade up, uh, and possibly into the lottery. Um, let's say I'm not pos. Let's say Celtics because they're they're just trying to get rid of picks. They I don't think they have room for three rookies. Uh, I don't see any, uh, I don't see anybody else. Maybe I don't see anybody that we could possibly move up to except for the except for the Celtics. Uh, Maybe the Pelicans. Team. F it. <laughs> so who yeah. around who around them, other than the players that we already mentioned, would we have a shot at um, getting? In fact, let me actually uh, expand on that. Who would be the – if we were to make that trade on draft night, what, who would be a player that you'll suspect the Mavs are trying to target or or – who are some names that we should possibly be looking at if the Mavericks are trying to draft in the in the lottery come November 18th? Yeah, um, I mean, I think the I, you're going to hate me because I've said two of these guys already, but Sadiq Bey uh, is probably the top one. And then I would say maybe Desmond Bain. I, I really think he's a potential he's, lottery pick. Like Desmond Bain is going to go before? Bro. It's it's possible. He got – I mean, his agent got Cam Johnson last year in the lottery, like at like 11. That, so that, was, that, the, that was the wow pick. That was a yep. wow, wow, yep. yeah, yeah. I would and be so angry. You, know, I like, bro. When I tell, like, I will probably have like a legit reaction to Desmond Bain going to the lottery. Like, I, I, yeah. like, I would not be happy. i was like, guy, would not. Josh get Green is good. I, I think it might happen. You think it might happen? He's right. He I is rising. He's rising. Yeah. Mother effer, dude. Golly, well, I'm gonna need him to stop. Like, I'm gonna need him to have. But, a- Another guy, though, that they could get, and I would not want this. I'm not big on this guy at all, uh, is Tyrese Halliburton um, from Iowa State. He's pretty much a – he's like if both of these guys did what they were supposed to do well, which is like a hybrid of DeLon Wright and Lonzo Ball. Kind of like – you know what I mean? Their skill sets. Like it, he is mm-hmm. a perfect blend of them with a really good head on his shoulders, and he knows how to use his strengths to his advantage a lot better than both of them. Does that my makes sense. Came in and literally kicked down my door, <laughs> and doesn't announce himself. He just like kicks down my door. My door doesn't close. It just it shuts, but it doesn't. Lo- it doesn't. The thing doesn't. <laughs> but so he just comes in and kicks down my door. He's like, "What's up?" Um, you're so interesting. So you're not. You're not as high on Tyrese. I've seen people <laughs> say Tyrese can go. Um, is it Ty- yeah, Tyrese. Yeah, as high as like. Four. Yeah, I would not do that. I would not do that. I might eat my words. I will gladly do so because he's a good kid. But mm. I mean, it's a big risk. He's he's like one hundred seventy something pounds. He's six five. Doesn't have crazy long arms. Uh, has not the weirdest athletic. jump shot probably in NBA history. One of the uh, that, that's a lot to risk. 
he's smart and he's a good kid, but it's a lot to risk. Hmm. And it, he really can't create much. <laughs> so if we're, if we're trying to trade up, you, you'll suspect that that would be one of the players. Who... Yeah. Yeah. They recently worked him out a couple weeks ago. So really it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't shock me. Oh, yeah. Gosh. I'm, I mean, I guess uh, I still don't, I still don't understand why we're even looking at guards right now. It's like, anybody... yeah, it'd be a DeLon replacement. That's... I guess, but still, I was like, I, even if DeLon leaves, even if we trade him, it's like we still have so many guards on the team. Like we might bring back, uh, you know, uh, I always forget freaking names. Um, Trey Burke. Uh, yeah. And I'll be Sorry. excited to have Trey Burke back. And I don't think we need another guard. I feel like anyone at least the size of 6'6 six, six, that can play defense and shoot the ball, those are the people that we need to be looking at. Um, I do agree with you. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, I am also high on Josh Green as well. I've, I've heard great things about him. Um, all right. Have other names. This is the guy that I, I've heard. I haven't seen. I haven't really looked into. I probably should have. That's just me being lazy. I'm sorry, people. But uh, Precious Achun, Achunwa from Memphis. Um, I've been hearing things about him. Uh, he was, for people who don't know, isn't he from Texas or something? He he was teammate uh, with Cade Cunningham, was he not? I don't know, actually. I don't know. He's, I don't know. Uh, he's from, you. I, I should talk to, to you about yes, next year's yes, draft. Yes, he was. Too. He was. They went to the same high school. Yep. Yeah, I should talk to you about next year's draft, too. That's a, that's going to be a freaking. Next year's is stacked. <laughs> that's that's going to be a fun draft. Uh, Mavericks are not going to participate in the first round, uh, <laughs> but hey, we got Christos Porzingis, and I'm completely okay with that. Um, all right, so what, what do you know about Precious? Precious. That's a, yeah, so that's he's African, that's such an African uh, name, but yeah, he's <laughs> he's uh, he's a polarizing prospect. I really don't see the big reason why. Um, he's an outstanding defender. Like he will guard anybody on the floor. And, and I don't mean that in an exaggerated way. I think he can guard almost anybody except like the quickest point guards. Hmm. Uh, he's crazy on defense on offense. He gets a little bit of tunnel vision. Doesn't really know what to do a lot of times with the ball in his hands. Like he forces a lot of stuff, but again, he's 19, 20. It happens. Mm -hmm. uh, freak athlete. I, I would, I would invest. I have him like in the twenties and I do think he could be one of the guys I was going to say him as another guy, the maps could trade up for. Because I've seen things that like the Kings love him. I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of a lot of these pre-draft reports. Mm -hmm. um, but he is definitely someone that would work well in the Mavs. Amazing in pick and roll on both ends. Like, he can handle it a little bit. Again, probably don't want it because his decision making is poor. But, yeah, he's, he's got a lot. I mean, if, if there's, if there's a, a player in between him and the basket, then you'll be okay with the ball being in his hands and him trying to score. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one he's probably fine. It's just uh, if he needs to make a quick pass, it's he misses a lot. We've had we've had we've had big men that if that was the case, I still wouldn't want them to shoot. Uh, for example, uh, Brendan Haywood. <laughs> I think my my back when he was uh, back when he was starting, he was a starting center for the Mavericks. I was like, dude, your role is the only time you score is if there's literally nobody in between you and the basket. If there's one defender. No, <laughs> like you, yep. yeah, you 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 get that ball to somebody else because no, um, so cool. I mean, I, yeah, pressure. So I, I've heard, I've, yeah, I have. Uh, I, I mean, with a little up here because I mean, I listen to I listen to uh, draft draft talk and stuff like that stuff to get me through the freaking day. Uh, yep. And the stuff I hear about pressures, I hear nothing about his offense. Uh, or nothing good about his offense, at least. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I just hear really people raving. Yeah, raving about his defense says he's he can literally guard all five positions, and I'm just like, that's not true. I, I, I highly doubt a big man can <laughs> guard all five positions effectively. But if he can, definitely, uh, I'll like him. He's what six eight, uh, so he's I think six four. ten something like that. I mean, he's yeah. pretty big. Uh, yeah, he, he measured at yeah six nine. Uh, with a seven-one wingspan, so, so he's, what's, a, what's a comp for him? Would it be like a Montrez Harrell type? So I had one. Uh, let me let me pull it up because I'm blanking on who I had. It was a weird one. Uh, I said Jeremy Grant 
would be like a ceiling. Ooh. Uh, floor would be like Trevor Booker kind of guy where it's <laughs> just like an eighth man, which he just doesn't stick out. Like he was fine. He just wasn't uh-huh. like, yeah, you know, no, but yeah. Jeremy Grant, like 100% is a, is a strong one. Okay. So that's, that's good. I did definitely someone that, you know, I would not mind having on the team if we had to take something other than a wing, but if he's capable yep. of guarding wings, then I will, I will at least concede that. Um, if he, if he can't shoot, we have plenty of shooters on the team um, like uh, Seth and Tim and Maxi. All of them can shoot. Um, let me talk about Kira Lewis Jr. That I, for a long time, Tankathon and some other, some other uh, mocks had him going to the Mavericks at 18. What are some of the things he brings? I see he's from Alabama. Is he another type <coughs> of uh, what's that? What's that guy's name for the Cavaliers? Sexton? Is he another Sexton? Oh or- no, no. So I think, first of all, I think he goes top 10. It's hard for me to see him go out of the lottery. Really? Um, so he's unbelievably quick, easily the quickest player in the draft. Really good defender. Uh, and he needs to add a ton of weight. Again, one of those guys that, like, his foot speed is crazy. And, and again, like, his overall speed is wild. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's 19. He was a freshman. At, he, couldn't, he wasn't even draft eligible last year. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's not going to be – I don't think he's got, like, some crazy upside. But – in terms of impact, I think at the worst, you get a Mario Chalmers kind of guy who just starts and does kind of the dirty work off ball while the rest of the guys, you know, go to doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the best, I think you get a Mike Conley, who is just a, I don't know, this is going to sound terrible, but a lot better version of that, what I just described. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, just overall good and does all the dirty work. Wait, so this guy is a sophomore, but he wasn't even draft eligible. He was too young to be in the draft. He's, yep, 19 until April. Really? Yep. So he's a, he's a young yeah. young sophomore. Very Did he like reclassify or something? Why is he that? I think so. I think so. Yeah. That makes that makes sense. I was gonna say, like, God, Lee, dude, you're you're. <laughs> I mean, but if you can do that though, that's actually really beneficial. You get that year of development. Um, you don't have to come out. You can get two years, of, and you still don't have that stigma of being an old prospect, which I feel like is dumb. But you know, yep. they have it. It's, it exists, so you might as well try to work your way around it. Um, all right. So this is a guy I've been hearing, not from any, I don't want to say, I don't want to sound like an asshole, but not from any credible um, mock drafts. Uh, these are kind of like dudes I've seen like, from like YouTube or whatever. Dudes like me, essentially that, uh, you know, are fans, but have YouTube pages, probably doing it for fun and probably making money. I don't know. But a, um, guy that I've seen a couple of times is a Cole Anthony. Now, yeah. um, I remember hearing about him at the beginning of the year when he was in North Carolina. Uh, everyone was talking, was really hype about him and what he could do. Um, but I'm definitely not hearing that kind of hype anymore. What's going on with Cole Anthony? Yeah, so he, he kind of screwed himself on this. He went to North Carolina. There's no talent around him. He, his best talent, his only other guy who was like a maybe – potentially top 100 draft guy, got hurt halfway through the season. And then Cole Anthony got hurt in December um, and for whatever reason rushed back and just wanted to play. And that hurt him. Like, for whatever reason, his passion and everything just – it screwed him over. Uh, He wasn't the same after the meniscus tear. uh, Or I don't know if it was a tear, meniscus injury. And uh, he just wasn't himself at all. And his stats kind of went down. It wasn't at all who he is. Like, the beginning of the season was fully – who he was like top I still have him number five like I'm not I'm not holding that against him I have heard the drop is real though like mm-hmm. that teams just don't like him that much as a person I as I think person yeah like like as a they think he's like selfish that's okay. like the word on the street I don't know though like if you're at some point that comes down to who is coaching you mm-hmm. but that stuff is fixable I, I just I have I, I have a pet peeve of when people have that um people have that mark on somebody based off of, I mean, maybe they get more, maybe they have more information than I do, but I feel like, you know, for him, for us to designate him as as selfish and probably like a bad, quote unquote, bad locker room guy uh, at this stage is like, I mean, we've always, we've always seen him in one locker room. Like, we don't, like yeah. we, we don't know the stories of what goes on, what, what happened or whatever, what he was going through at the time. So I, I really feel like we should, 
one of the pet peeves I had, because I, I actually was talking about, uh, okay, so when we were talking about uh, Zach Levine coming to the Mavs, uh, uh, one of the guys, I'm, I'm not going to say his name, but he was like, yeah, he's this, whatever, whatever, and he was a bad locker room guy. And I just, I just replied back. I was like, remember when we all thought Jimmy Butler was a bad locker room guy? Yeah. And I think yep. like all of Mavs, uh, Mavs fan base, essentially Mavs Twitter, essentially, when he when he put up that screenshot of him landing in Dallas, and everyone was like, "Oh, I don't want Jimmy Butler ten feet around Luka." I'm like, "Bro, like I would take a Jimmy Butler on this team with the quickness," and he's definitely yep. showed that. I mean, he's he's a dude that you know we've seen. I mean, he's competitive, and you know, you know, rightly so. I mean, we're dealing with. We're dealing with <laughs> professional athletes who you know make their job is to compete and sometimes people are you know being in an environment where people are not as competitive as you and you're supposed to be counting on them uh to help you guys win and they're not putting in the same kind of effort i can see uh how that can be frustrating and that's kind of what he was going through in minnesota and yep. dysfunction in philadelphia what he was noting, he was just like, what is going on here? Someone who's, someone who's competitive and wants to win will come across as, oh, he's a bad locker room guy, yeah. um, given in those certain circumstances. And he saw him with less talent than he had in Minnesota and in Philadelphia take his team to a finals. And now everyone's like, oh, he's completely, you know, shifted. Yep whatever he's an all-star 2k has him as a 93 oh my god dang that's a little i think that's a little much but okay whatever but he has turned a tide and for me i was like i don't think he turned the tide at all i think this is the guy he's been this whole time and we need to stop you know just throwing bad locker room guys now if it's guys like russell Westbrook, okay it's like that's different <laughs> we've, yeah, <laughs> we've had people leave him <laughs> yeah multiple stars leave him so uh I think the writing's on the wall with that one, but let's not throw it. So Cole Anthony, a bad locker room guy. My my only gripe is that he's a point guard, and that we have guards. Yeah, we have all the and he's he's undersized too. And he's under, yeah, we we have a lot of undersized guards. Like, yeah. um, so cool. Now I guess let's talk about some international guys because we wouldn't be a a maps uh, show in the slightest, we never talked about any international guys. So we talked about Balmero, we mentioned Pokashevsky and the fact that he's seven feet, 100, and 100 pounds soaking wet, absolutely toothpick, a stick figure, literally. Um, but a guy that I haven't, I've, I've seen in like YouTube mentioned, but I've never actually watched film because I'm like, I'm, I, I'm gonna sound like an asshole, but I'm kind of over international players. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I don't need this to be the European Mavs. Like, no. <laughs> and let me. I have a question about that too. For that, because because my 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 pet peeveness or whatever the word is is so high, I'm just like, okay. So I have a thought process. I want to ask you about that. But let me ask you about Theo Meldon. Uh, what are some of the things he can do? I, I guess he's a point guard, but he's a little taller. So he, can he play off guard? Um, will he fit playing with the Luca? What's the, what's the circumstances with this contract overseas? What what can he bring? That those type of questions. Yeah, so I think he would come over immediately. Okay. Um, he's really intriguing. He's kind of passive. That's the biggest knock on him. He's pretty passive, but he's also young. So like, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, but for him, he's got the the kind of coveted tools of having the length, the vision. Like he can run a clean pick and roll and everything, and he's got a really nice jump shot. Okay. Like that's and like and that's so simple. But not in many other guards in this class have that. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's a decent defender, too. So I, I think that is – he's almost a swing for the fences with not a ton of risk. You just he, – if he hits, he's not going to be, like, the most exciting player. But he would be good next to Luka uh, just because of how he can be that off guard and okay, play so off he, ball. So, if, yeah, if he's capable of playing off guard and defending. Yeah. Uh, yep. I mean, I guess I wouldn't have a – I guess I wouldn't have a problem. All right, anyway. <laughs> So the question I want to ask you about international players, and I hope this doesn't piss off our international base, <laughs> even though it's it's a very small, probably like one or two subscribers or whatever, <laughs> one or two or three, probably. And we probably have more because of Luca and Kristaps. But um, this whole 
how we how the Dallas fan base in our front office kind of romanticizes a European player. Um, and I do remember, I guess it was Luca's rookie year when when Mark was talking about how how they develop their players more or whatever uh, or better as opposed to making mixtapes or whatever, like how Dennis Smith. And oh yeah. I didn't really like that comment, uh, but it is what it is. He's, he's not wrong. <laughs> but, um, I mean, so the, the, que- the, question, the question that I have is, I mean, with, your, with how you study these prospects, um, is it – because I'm still the belief that the best basketball players are still in the United States of America and still in – this great country that we call home um, are still here. But we're, if we were to get like, let's say, um, Theo Maldon is at 23 and you have another guy at 24 who's an American born player. Do you, what's the likelihood that the European player is better? Because I'm trying to think like, if we have, if we're just talking about getting the best player and drafting, which is essentially, is essentially gambling, um, do we have a better shot at choosing the, he just opened the door and just left. Unbelievable. Um, do we have a better shot at getting a rotational type player or a player that can contribute in any way, shape or form uh, than Sorry, I forgot, I forgot the question, but do we have a better shot at landing a, a, a productive player if we stuck with a American-born player? Or is there really something to how these Europeans or overseas players develop themselves to a point where it's like, if we have a guys at the same level, we'll probably go with the European level just because how they, they seem to come uh, more advanced at a younger age. Well, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean... It is obviously prospect by prospect. I do think, though, that, like, they are getting more advanced training just because they're in pro environments from, like, 15, 16 years old, which just is not the case here. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's a huge leg up in just learning the game. Uh, I mean, it's very rare, I feel like, to have an international prospect that you say, you know, weak feel for the game, doesn't understand. It's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas in the U.S., we kind of go for that upside, you know, if we got a lot of, like, in the U.S., we have more raw athletes. You know, yeah. like you don't really hear of the raw athletes coming from overseas. It's pretty rare. There are some. There's a guy this year, uh, Pauli Bua. Um, I might be saying his name wrong, like, but it's it's pretty rare though. Like most of those guys go to college or something, or they're out of high school. You know, it, it is a little bit different, but obviously prospect by prospect. Okay, I guess that's kind of like my frustration because we always see. I mean, like I said, if there's a Euro- if there's a European player, and you know at mocked at some range and the Mavs happen to be at that range is like he's going to the Mavs because the Mavs will go out their way to choose this guy and it's like if we're if we're talking about getting the best players you know yes uh you know Luca <laughs> yeah if a guy like Luca comes across you got to get a guy it's probably, yeah. I, I said Luca was probably the most accomplished prospect of all time not even European Yep. Um, because I haven't seen I'm, – I'm trying to think. A guy who's won, I guess, multiple championships and MVP of, of uh, I guess – A pro the, league. A right. pro like, league, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so just because he's, he did it at the level that he did it automatically puts him at – at the most accomplished NBA prospect of all time. So we had a chance and I can't believe the, the Kings passed up on him, but thank God. <laughs> like, and the, and the Hawks. Thank you. You can, you can have Trey young. <laughs> you can definitely shoot, but yeah, whatever. Um, great. But he, I mean, yeah, you have guys like Luca, you have guys like KP that come across, but I feel like if it's a guy like, you know, like you said, prospect by prospect, but we're we're guessing essentially we're gambling on who's gonna be the guy that hits, uh, you know. I'll probably I mean de- yeah, depends on need and everything like that. 
but I'll probably go with more than American born raw talent. Maybe I can mold him to be something. Um, but you know, whatever, but I, I think we've been going on more than an hour. I always, I try to, I try to stay around an hour. Uh, but it was definitely fun, dude. It was my first yeah. time to be back. Sports Anytime is back. Thank you, uh, Richard, uh, with blessing us with your knowledge about the, <laughs> the draft and everything, all the prospects that we talked about. Uh, I guess for the people who are going to be watching this video that don't know who you are and how they can get some of your knowledge. And actually, I mean, you're, you're very good at you know, uh, tweeting back and answering my question. How can some of those people uh, get in touch with you? Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, best way, just Mavstraft on Twitter, all one word, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the green and black logo, pretty easy to find. Yep. <laughs> right there on your, uh, right there on your, your, your Abby or whatever it's called. Yep. I'm not good, I'm not <laughs> yeah. good at social media. I'm not good at technology. <laughs> As you, as you saw, it took us like 10 minutes just to figure out how to get you on Zoom. Hey, that was all me. That was all me. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's literally, it, that's literally how it is with all technology. I'm not the best at it. But, dude, I appreciate you <laughs> jumping on. Uh, I'm definitely still going to be hitting you up um, definitely yes, next sir. year um, because you said next year is going to be freaking stacked. Um, we might not have a pick. We might. Who knows? Uh, but let's just see. I, I'll still like to cover it because I am – intrigued about the talent that's coming out of there but uh dude once again appreciate you coming out thanks for coming peace out dude